Hello, this is Dr. David Friedman, host of To Your Good Health Radio. Over the years, I've had the privilege of interviewing today's leading health and diet experts. And while some of them are able to convey their topic at a level that people can comprehend, many stay at a level that's just not easy to grasp. If you're confused by all the different keto diets on the market or the right way to do intermittent fasting, you're in for a real treat today. Joining us is my good friend, Dr. Lori Shemek, her new book, Ketogenic Key, is the most simplified and easy to follow books ever written on the topic. Highly recommended. Dr. Shemek has really put together simple ways to lose weight, slow aging, stop inflammation, and prevent disease. Don't go anywhere. It all starts now. It's To Your Good Health Radio with number one best selling author and renowned wellness expert, Dr. David Friedman, changing lives just for the health of it. Our next guest is a leading fat cell researcher, health and weight loss expert, keynote speaker, and award-winning author. She's a recognized authority on inflammation and its role in weight loss, disease prevention, and optimizing health. She's been featured on TV and many publications, including The Doctors, Fox News, CNN, NBC, NPR, the Dr. Oz Good Life magazine, Prevention and Red Book, and that's just naming a few. The Huffington Post has recognized her twice as one of the top health and fitness experts. And recently, she was ranked by Global Data as the number one health and wellness influencer on Twitter. She holds a doctorate in psychology. She's a certified nutritional consultant and certified life coach. Her new book is called Ketogenic Key, Unlock the secrets to lose weight, slow aging, stop inflammation, and prevent disease. Welcome back to the show, Dr. Lori Shemek. Oh, thank you so much, Dr. Friedman. It's so nice to be back with you again. I always love our time. Yeah. So thank you oh, for, the, it, for having me. It, it, yeah, it's great. Great to have you back. Like I said, this makes your fourth time. So uh, I know. Excited Isn't always that amazing? to have you back. <laughs> I know. It's just I'm saying, know. and you know your bio's getting your bio's getting so much bigger. It's harder to read. I'm like, oh my god, pretty soon it's going to take up the whole show. Stop doing so things nice. that make me. I, I spent I'm spent a half hour saying how do I bring this down to like a, a simplified like your book does with keto. I love <laughs> I had it. To simplify yeah. your I need, bio. I need help with that. <laughs> Thank you. Well, with with so many you know keto uh-huh. diet book programs out there, mm-hmm. I'm curious. Was there any particular thing that most motivated you to set the record straight and write the ketogenic key? Yes, uh, because I know, as you know, but your audience may not know, that I focus on low-level inflammation in the body or chronic silent inflammation. And that has always been a focus of mine because it's so crucial to our health. It can either derail your health or just a little bit can optimize your health. And so through the years, uh, I've written books that really target in on inflammation. And so ketosis, which is the the main driving factor of, say, the ketogenic diet um, that provides all the goodies you get with it, is is an anti-inflammatory Um, uh, regulation, upregulation, if you will, of optimal health. And so, you know, the average American ingests uh, 300 carbs, grams of carbs a day. And that's astounding. If you stop and think about that, that's a lot for the body. And we're not used to ingesting that much glucose, essentially, because all these carbs get broken down or converted to glucose, right, in your bloodstream. And this creates a whole host of inflammatory conditions, especially of chronic. So if it's if it's consistent every day, you're eating that every day, which the standard American, you know, diet uh, provides us, uh, then you have inflammation in the body, most likely, and you also have high blood sugar. And so what what ketosis does or the ketogenic diet does is it reduces your carbohydrate load. And when that happens, uh, you're really um, doing something really beneficial for you. You're stopping uh, pesky uh, inflammasomes. You're producing NERF2, which is going to be very protective and optimize your health um, because ketosis is really inflammatory. So, you know, you look at the, the hybrid car analogy, right? When you think about um, how your body can run on two different types of fuel. 
And uh, as long as there's carbs and glucose from our diet, then the body will never look for an alternate for, form of fuel, which is fat. And so fat um, is, is a clean burning fuel, if you will. So with right. um, the, the hybrid car analogy, carbohydrates like glucose and sugar um, burn very quickly and they don't last. And like gasoline, they cause a dirty exhaust, if you will, at the cellular level from the inflammation, right. the free radicals, the ROS. And this is, this is damaging to our cells. It's damaging to our health, our blood vessels. But ketones, on the other hand, are like the electric portion of the hybrid car. They burn long, steady, and clean. And they generate more energy than glucose because they're – they're more economical, if you will, uh, than carbs and glucose. So what you want is to fuel your brain with wonderful ketones, and you'll always have glucose in the body. There's always right. a small reserve of it. But when you stop u relying on it for fuel, you become more fat adapted, and you stop becoming just a sugar burner. Right. Now, a lot of people believe that going keto means having to gorge on bacon and beef every day. Is it possible for somebody to go into ketosis by eating things like wild-caught fish, chicken, or maybe plant foods like olive oil, nuts, and avocados? Oh, absolutely, yes. And, you know, in fact, you're not only uh, ketosis, you're with ketosis, you're generating the ketone BHB. Right. Uh, beta-hydroxybutyrate, which is anti-inflammatory, but then on the ketogenic diet, for example, and there are other ways to get into ketosis, um, but with the ketogenic diet, if you're doing it properly, you're eating a lot of veggies, okay, a lot right. of non-starchy veggies, and you want to keep your carbs, you know, somewhere in the range of 50, uh, lower than 50 a day initially, until you become more metabolically flexible, which takes about maybe two weeks to a month for, it just depends on how um, um, dependent you were on, on glucose prior. But, yeah, it is very possible. And you can eat fish, which is ex excellent for you. And, uh, and, no, you don't have to have bacon. You don't have to have the carnivore-type foods <laughs> to, uh, to, in order right. to thrive. Well, a, lot, a lot of people believe that. A lot of people believe that. I think that when it first came out, that was really what was pushed. Right. And it's really changed a lot. There's, there, yeah. So I think people haven't opened their eyes yeah. to the new way. Right, David. Yes. It's a yeah. much healthier uh, way. You know, ketosis has been around for two and a half million years. <laughs> <laughs> so it's not really not a fad right. oh, diet. Yeah. What's bad about it is right. the, the types of foods that people are producing, um, you know, to right. for people to feel better about, you know, not eating real sugar and, and all of that good stuff. So, but yeah, those foods yeah. can become what they call dirty keto and not so healthy for you. Yeah, I was just going to bring that up. Really? I was just going to ask you about the clean versus dirty. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, I know in your book you share how you share how somebody could drink diet soft drinks and chew on trans fat loaded pork rinds with margarine, <laughs> and that's considered keto. Right. But that's called dirty keto, right? Right. So explain the difference between dirty and clean. It's the ingredients. So if you're eating, say, let's take pork rinds. You know, if I put something on social media about that, people are, have a fit because they think, oh, my gosh, I thought it was keto. Well, it is keto because you're not bumping up your insulin um, and glucose right. but, uh, so much. Uh, but you, you're, you're eating something that's been deeply fried. So any oil that's fried, any oil that's heated to that high of a heat is going to be inflammatory, right? So our whole purpose in living a long with a you know a wonderful a long health span and lifespan is to live an anti-inflammatory life, and um, so when you eat foods like diet soda, for example, that's keto, but and maybe not actually with the with the research out there. But um, another example would be uh, these keto foods that say just three net carbs, you know, and you can have these fat bombs and. And all of these types of ingredients can be toxic and overwhelming for the body. And they're using oils like, uh, you know, um, canola oil or corn or soy oil that, uh, or vegetable oil that actually cause inflammation in the body. And yes, an oil is an oil, but there are different types of oils that have a 
powerful effect upon your health. And um, so, you know, it's, it's all about choosing the right foods, living an anti-inflammatory life, ketosis, uh, is really the key to, I should have named the book, Ketosis is the Key, but I didn't. <laughs> but um, but there are other ways, uh, intermittent fasting, there's um, exogenous ketones, supplemental ketones, and then exercise as well. So these are, if you combine one or two of them, you're fantastic. If you combine all four of them, you're, you're doing amazing. Right. I know another topic you cover in your book is the intermittent fasting. And how does that play a role in a, a ketogenic diet? How, how does that work? Right. And it's, you know, the one thing I, I caution people to do is not jump into a, um, a intermittent fasting program or a keto program without slowly getting there. Not so slow, but just training right. your body to rely more on your fat for fuel and not so much mm -hmm. glucose for fuel. So I always recommend that people, you know, stop snacking for a while just so that their body gets used to not having food, right? And so intermittent fasting um, is simply not eating for a period of time. And we've all done it. We do it eight hours a night, assuming you don't get up and snack in the middle of the night. Um, and also, you know, if you've we had to fast 12 hours before a blood test the next day. That's intermittent fasting. Or you've delayed your uh, breakfast to meet your friends for brunch. That's intermittent fasting. And so, you know, it's, it's great when you start out and the book shows you exactly how to do that. Um, you slowly delay your breakfast, for example. And ideally, what you would like to do is to get up to um, generally 12 hours is okay okay for people, uh, but to experience what is called autophagy, um, just the beginnings, the real beginnings of it, it's always there, but the real beginnings deeper, I guess you would say, would be uh, 18 hours, 16 to 18 hours, or 18 hours and more. If, if you fast longer than 24 hours, you get into a deeper autophagy, but uh, just, you know, if you can make a goal of 12 hours, that's fantastic to do that every day. Yeah. I know I, we have a lot of experts that say we should skip the morning breakfast and eat our first meal at lunchtime. Uh, being mm -hmm. a fan of breakfast, I'm a breakfast lover. I was happy to see some new research showing that, hey, maybe it could be reversed and you could skip that last meal of the day. Share your thoughts on oh, that. Yeah. Do you feel that, uh, that fasting window need, works best in the morning or, or can we have something and not eat it late, late at night? I think, you know, it really depends upon the person. I really do. Now, for me, skipping breakfast is easier um, it, because if you have, you know, other people in your life that you have to deal with, you don't have to worry about them eat. you know, what the, when they're eating. Right. right. So, but ideally, it doesn't matter when you do it. So, um, if you skip breakfast, actually skipping dinner would be, uh, better for your health because you really don't want to eat too soon before you go to bed. A couple hours, if you stop right, a couple that, hours, yeah. right, before you sleep, right. uh, research is showing that it's much better for your health and overall uh, yeah, I know. brain health. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, my window for fasting is usually about 13, sometimes 14 hours. I stop eating wow. at 6 p.m. And I, and I usually have breakfast at 9, 9 a.m. And then on the weekends, I'll often do a one-day fast where I just do, you know, lemon with water. And let me ask you, this is mm -hmm. something I'm curious about. During those times when I fast, my brain seems to become sharper and more in tune. How does starving the body create improvement in mental clarity? Seems like it would do the opposite. <laughs> Why am yeah, I so does, sharp when I'm it? hungry? Yeah. <laughs> explain, explain well, actually, that. You're, you, you, hit, you hit on a point that's important because it does cause foggy thinking if you're not uh, fat adapted. But once you become metabolically flexible, say you can use your glucose and you can use your fat, and it doesn't, it doesn't matter, right? Your body's able to efficiently use it. Um, but what's happening is the brain loves ketones. A lot of people don't know that. And the, it's a clean, like I mentioned earlier, it's a clean burning fuel. So it really tamps down on the inflammation within the, within the brain, helps to promote better uh, uh, overall brain health 
and mental clarity and focus and energy in the body. And the list, you know, you would think that it sounds like a magic list, but it really, it really does provide longevity, cellular health. You know, I talked about autophagy before, but, um, you know, and, and especially with intermittent fasting, um, you, it's really a cellular house cleaning, if you will. So right. the cells, the glial cells at night, um, when you sleep are all benefited by ketones as well. And you, and again, you, you go into ketosis, whether you're fasting or, uh, on the ketogenic diet. So yeah, you have a lot of benefits to brain for brain health. In fact, um, they're showing that those who have Alzheimer's disease, uh, are more, um, more productive, if you will, mm-hmm. appear to respond better with their symptoms with ketones and that and they're using supplemental ketones with them because it's difficult wow. to get somebody uh with uh, Alzheimer's disease to eat a ketogenic diet for sure but right. um you know they it helps with strokes and all other types of brain injury so yeah ketones are very important ketosis is the key <laughs> Is the key, yeah. And as you know, I interview a yeah. lot of guests on the show with, with difference of opinions, sometimes North to South mm-hmm. Pole, a one-to-one. But one thing that experts all seem to agree on is inflammation is the root cause of disease. And I have to say it, you were the first guest on this show about eight years ago <laughs> to share how inflamed fat cells are a major cause of disease. So kudos to you. Everybody followed Thank your lead. You. And it's like, yeah, she's on inflammation. And he says, well, is she, is she in inflammation or inflammation? No, she's talking about inflammation. Because when you were on the show, people thought inflammation means you hit your elbow and it swells. They didn't get that yeah. this, there's an internal inflammatory response, right? Explain that for those that are I, that are still maybe not understanding this inflammation deal. Right. So, yeah, when I first started um, – you know, researching all of this, it was, you know, inflammation was not a buzzword like it is now. And um, yes, so there's, there's really three types of inflammation. There is acute inflammation, and it's not so cute because no. it hurts. <laughs> it's, you know, that, that scraped knee, that cut on the finger, that brain swollen ankle, right? So let's wow. say you cut your finger, um, an enormous amount of inflammatory molecules are released. And soldiers, if you will, rush to the site to repair the wound. They repair the wound. The wound heals. Soldiers go away. The inflammation goes away. And all is well. And so the next type of inflammation is called silent or chronic inflammation. And that is the core underlying cause of most illness, disease, faster aging, and weight gain. And uh, it's been shown that 75% of all Americans have this type of inflammation and do not even know it. They're just walking around with it. And so diseases like heart disease, cancer, type 2 diabetes, obesity, and the list goes on. And then the third type of inflammation is what I call fat inflammation. Um, it is the inflammation of our fat cells. And when our fat cells, when they're healthy, they start out you know, about the size of a period on the end of a sentence. But with the type of foods people are eating, the 300 grams of carbohydrates a day, um, these fat cells are becoming bigger, they're becoming more bloated, and they're acting as if they're sick or infected, and they too begin to release inflammatory molecules. But like silent inflammation, fat cell inflammation emits just a trickle. And you would think, well, that's better than a lot, like acute inflammation right. is, but it isn't because that that silent inflammation of the fat cell never goes away. And uh, it's there 24-7 unless you intervene. Right. What are some inflammatory foods and some inflammation so bad? Is there like give a public enemy number one? Like what's the one thing everybody <laughs> should eliminate from their diet? I I believe it's sugar. Uh and uh, excess carbohydrates in the diet. So there's sugar, whether, you know, whether it's excess food in general is is inflammatory. Mm -hmm. So, but if there was one type of food, I would, I would say sugar and um, these refined oils I mentioned earlier, these 
uh, also promote a compound that gets stored in the fat cell called arachidonic acid, which promotes even more inflammation that reduces metabolism. It has a, a metabolic effect that reduces metabolism and therefore promotes weight gain. But so these oils, uh, the soy oil, the corn, um, canola, vegetable, mm-hmm. there are no vegetables in vegetable oil, <laughs> just so people know. <laughs> and or ketchup. Soy oil. It's not, that right? Ketchup is not a tomato. <laughs> <laughs> So these are high in omega-6, but don't get me wrong. I'm not against carbs. I think carbs are wonderful. I'm not against uh, uh, omega-6 fats. They're essential Mm -hmm. and they're necessary, but it's the type that you ingest. So these oils can be replaced with healthy versions that optimize cellular health and cell membrane health, which is crucial to optimal health. So um, we're looking at avocado oil, olive oil, or uh, coconut oil. These are examples. Got it. Talk to us about fruit. What about fruit? Does an apple a day keep the ketosis away? Is it off limits, all fruit? Uh, no, not with green apples. Green apples are fine. And, you know, and really it doesn't, if, the, if you look at the portion size, as long as you have a general idea of how many grams of carbs you're eating a day, you can eat whatever you want. You know, you can have that banana, some of that banana, but not much because <laughs> those, uh, those uh-huh. will throw right. you out of ketosis. But yes, fruit does tend to throw one out of ketosis if you eat the high sugar fruits. The low sugar fruits like green apples, um, berries, all berries are fantastic. Um, but you know, I eat figs. I love figs, um, and I don't. And also, I don't recommend staying in ketosis. 24-7, seven, seven days a week, right? So I think it's important to go right. in and out of ketosis because then you train your body to utilize glucose more efficiently and uh, your fat as well. So, yeah, I have um, – I, I eat carbohydrates. I eat, you know, a lower-carb diet, uh, I, would, I would say, and, and then go into right. ketosis, some ketosis meals, some uh, ketogenic meals, sorry. Yeah. What about for our listeners that are into daily exercise? Would they need to do anything differently when it comes to maintaining ketosis? Uh, Actually, no. I mean, as long as, you know, exercise, if, you know, there are types of exercise that can get you into ketosis. One is high intensity interval training um, that will help promote uh, ketosis and high intensity interval training is it sounds scary but it really isn't it's mm-hmm. really just going all out as fast as you can for a certain period of time so I like to use the four the um, the basic one which is you go all out for 30 seconds and then you go back mm-hmm. down to a slow to moderate pace for 90 seconds and you do that eight times that's uh, high intensity interval training, and so it, it seems to be a really, a really great one. There are more intense ones, uh, like Tabata, for example, which is right. it, it, that uh, that'll uh, definitely challenge most people. Um, but yes, so any any type of exercise you do, walking, dancing, it doesn't matter. It does not matter, and it actually. And like I said early on, if you combine it with a lower carb diet and intermittent fasting you're fantastic uh, in terms of optimizing your health. That's great. I, I want to definitely get the question. A lot of questions come in from female listeners that are dealing with menopause-related weight gain and all the side effects that come with it. Uh, they want me to ask you, can keto diet improve hormonal imbalances? Actually, it can. Um, we there's, a, there's quite a bit of research out there in that it helps to um, – reduce the symptoms of PCOS, for example, and really balance uh, menopausal, uh, pre-menopausal and postmenopausal hormone levels. So it's, it's been shown to be very effective with hormone issues. And a lot of that is partly because your body essentially goes out of whack when you're eating a lot of Uh, I want to say glucose, but carbohydrates, right? Because you're upsetting the natural balance within the body and you're promoting inflammation. When you remove all of that, you have essentially your body is like, oh, (laughs) this is the way it's supposed to be, you know? And uh, so that's part of 
you're also, you know, you're eating anti-inflammatory foods. You're, you know, nice, right. gr- really healthy vegetables, like your garden, for example, yeah. which I love. Yeah, yeah. especially and, the figs, because um, you're a fig fan. You like my figs, huh? I'm a fig fan. I yes. Love- oh, oh they were so good. <laughs> they have fresh, fresh figs. Oh, yeah, no. Fantastic. That was mean of you to do that. You know that, right? <laughs> <laughs> hey, it was just a, hey, it was just a figment of your imagination. You didn't see it. Oh, just no. <laughs> <laughs> see? Your brain's sharp. You're, you're in ketosis right now. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. In the minute we in the minute we have left, boy, time flew by. Anything else you'd like to share with the listeners we didn't cover in the minute we have left? No, I just think that you know it's really important to um, not be afraid of what people think is a fad diet. That it's an extremely optimal way to eat off and on, okay? So when you reduce your carbs, you're also optimizing your health. That's a really important point. You don't have to not eat carbs. I love carbs. I eat carbs, right? So that, I think that's a really important point that people need to know. It's, it's a very healing way of eating as well. Makes sense. Well, time just flew by as it always does when you're on the show. I want to thank you for li- literally you, you're putting the, you put in you put the key in ketosis for us. And, hey, that has a nice <laughs> ring. Have you considered spelling it? K- I love it. Listen, K E Y T O S I O S. Ketosis. <gasps> no. There you go. I love that idea. Go ahead and use it. You're, see, Marketing. You're a genius. Yeah, keto. Put the key in <laughs> ketosis. <laughs> that should be your thing. <laughs> I'll be the first to get it. Yes. Here I go. And and then what happens is the years go by, I'll get all these other guests that did. I says, hey, you know, eight years ago, we talked about, and you were the first. (laughs) Everybody follows. Yep, that's right. (laughs) Mark my words. (laughs) That's right. We look forward to having you back on the show Uh, soon. I wish you all the luck. I love this book. Thank you. Everybody go out, get your copy of The Ketogenic Key. And you can do that by going to Dr. Lori Shemek.com. com. And her last name, let me spell that, is S. H-E-M-E-K, and I've read most of the ketogenic diet books on the market. I'll tell you, Dr. Shemek's book is hands down the most simplified, easy-to-follow book on the topic, bar none. Her book gives the reader really just these easy-to-understand-and-follow blueprints to help you lose weight, slow aging, stop inflammation, and prevent disease. You can follow Dr. Shemek on Twitter and Instagram at Lori Shemek, and on Facebook, she's at Dr. Lori Shemek. Of course, you can follow me on Twitter and Facebook at Dr. David Friedman. On Instagram, I'm at Dr. D. Friedman. If you heard Dr. Shemek share something today that could benefit somebody you know, send them a link to this podcast available to yourgoodhealthradio.com and radiomd.com and check out our podcast library and share these segments with friends, family, coworkers, and on social media. Sharing is caring. You can also subscribe to future podcasts at iHeartRadio and iTunes. More to come. 